wonder what he needs. Yes, I'm coming, I'm coming. What do you have there? Well, well, there have been five mass extinctions over the history of the planet, and the sixth one is going on now. What should we do about it? Oh, well, let's figure it out. When a tigress Kara ended up in a tiger station in Mosweiler, Germany, local vets noticed she had issues with her teeth. Her front tooth had two deep grooves that stretched right to the root canal. This didn't promise anything good. The tooth was about to break. Have you ever had a toothache? Then you know how unbearable it can get. To stop Kara from suffering, they decided to fix her tooth. An international team of specialists, both biologists and dentists, were assembled. It took them 80 minutes to perform a complex operation. Well, if we were talking about a human, then I would say they just got a dental crown. But this is a tigress, so the doctors had to try to give her a golden tooth. The story ended well, but only because people noticed Kara's condition in time. In fact, animals suffer from dental problems the same way we do. True, most often they don't have cavities, but other diseases are common in the wild. Meanwhile, there are no dentists there who can fix everything in time. So what are the animals supposed to do? You sure about this? Of course! Humans do it all the time! <sighs> if only it were that simple. People use their teeth to chew food. Well, and sometimes to rip open packaging. Meanwhile, teeth are a weapon of predators in the wild. Before the tiger starts using his teeth during lunch, he needs to catch and kill his lunch. How do you do that if you're missing a fang? All the deer will laugh at you. A tiger that lost its teeth in the wild becomes much more dangerous than its healthy kin. Not for deer, of course. When you can't handle your usual prey, you have to look for an alternative. Someone less nutritious but weaker, like a human. These are not my assumptions, but quite real facts. Take the Champawat tiger, one of the most famous man-eating animals. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, this female tiger killed 436 people in Nepal and the Indian Kumoan Division. Her attacks were even listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. No tiger has attacked this many people. It was a real monster that neither hunters nor even the Nepalese army could eliminate for a long time. The locals were paralyzed from fear. They refused to go to work when they heard growling. And you can understand them. I wouldn't go either. In the end, the British hunter Jim Corbett shot the tigress with the help of 300 villagers. Only after it was revealed that the upper and lower canine teeth on the right side of her mouth were broken, this injury prevented the tigress from hunting her natural prey. So she started hunting humans. Now the golden tooth doesn't seem like such a weird solution anymore, does it? When you know what a tigress without a tooth can do, spending 80 minutes on an operation seems like a very good idea. However, people help not only those animals that become cannibals when push comes to shove. We create prosthetic beaks, tails, and paws. We save a variety of creatures, both wild and domestic, because... Well, because we can. Because it's the ability of people to take care of those around them. And it seems like every year mankind is trying to do more and more for wild animals. It makes amends for everything it's done before. You already know about environmental issues, the extinction of species, and so on. It had seemed that people have finally realized they need to respect nature. What could possibly go wrong? It may sound weird, but sometimes we try too hard. Take pandas, for example. They've been facing extinction for so long, everyone got used to it. But a while back, pandas changed their status. There are more of them. We can relax a little, not forcing the poor fellows to procreate. Also, people got too carried away. They just spoiled the animals. The researchers found that conditions that are too good only hurt the pandas. When 80% of the territory is considered a perfect environment for pandas, for example, it contains bamboo forests, animals cease to reproduce effectively. Why? Well, why should they? There's a lot of good food around. You don't need to migrate somewhere. You can just relax and have fun. Kids? What kids? Another important trend is releasing animals from zoos. Remember Free Willy, a family movie about an orca who made friends with a boy? Well, you probably saw it, or at least some shots from it. The orca who played Willy was called Kiko. After the movie was released, Kiko became so famous, people petitioned to release the animal back to the wild. Despite the objections of some experts, they succeeded. But the joy of the orca's freedom was short-lived. Kiko died after only five years of life in the ocean. He was about 27, although in the wild, male orcas can live up to 50. But why did this happen? Shouldn't Kiko feel better in the wild and enjoy every day? 
Unfortunately, everything is much more complicated than it might seem at first glance. Animals rarely learn important survival skills in captivity and often become too dependent on humans. Without natural fear of humans, they're vulnerable to poachers and poorly adapted to life in the wild. Kiko could never become a part of an orca pod and feel like he belonged there. Yes, sometimes he stayed close to his kin and hunted, but all the time he aimed to be near humans. That's hardly surprising. Kiko was caught at the age of two. Who can become wild again after 20 years in an aquarium? This does not mean that animals that end up with humans are doomed to always stay close to them. For fish, reptiles, and amphibians, returning to wild nature can be quite simple. For example, frogs can be bred in the lab and released back into the wild by the bucket load. But this won't work with complex mammals like primates, big cats, elephants, and whales. They need to be trained since childhood and live in an animal society in order to be able to return to the wild later. They also need as little contact with humans as possible. That's why real animal rescue pros do everything they can to avoid getting attached to them and prevent them from becoming tame. Is it difficult? Damn right it is, but it's possible. If you think about it, all these prosthetics, releasing animals back to the wild, creating perfect conditions, is just a drop in the ocean. Most of the people on the planet need to work together to bring about real major change and do something about the mass extinction. Perhaps completely reconsider their lifestyle, and this is... Let's just say, not very realistic. And while humanity still can't agree, at least on this issue, scientists decided to create a new Noah's Ark. Of course, not literally an ark. It's not a vessel with two of every kind of animal. Scientists want to create something like a backup of the Earth. A vault to store cryogenically frozen genetic material of 6.7 million species of plants, animals, and fungi from our planet. Yes, such vaults already exist, but imagine that the sea level rises, an earthquake or something like that happens, and we lose everything. The most logical thing would be to place samples where global warming will not reach them, on the moon. Well, that does sound reasonable. Scientists even figured out exactly where the ark should be located in order to protect it from meteorites and solar radiation. Though delivering the genetic material to the moon will take about 250 rocket launches, this is more than six times the number of launches it took to build the International Space Station, I'm even afraid to think how expensive this project is, but we're talking about the conservation of biodiversity, and this is worth the expenses. The important thing is that nothing happens to the Ark on the moon. You never know. Oh, is that all for me? All these attempts of humans to stop extinction seem to be reasonable and the right thing to do. We care about the planet. We're the good guys. Yes, sometimes we don't act like ones, but we are ready to fix the consequences. But if you think about it, how sincere are we? Mass extinctions periodically wipe out up to 95% of all species in one go. They occur every 50 to 100 million years, and scientists agree that we are now in the middle of the sixth such extinction. Yes, this time humans were the main cause of it, but like all previous extinctions, this is quite natural. It pushes evolution forward. So in an attempt to stop extinction, people are just meddling with natural selection. If you think about it, how often do our concerns about the planet boil down to the questions like, can we feed ourselves? Or won't my house get wrecked by a hurricane? Or how are we going to drive our cars if we're out of natural resources? Some people actually care little about animals and much more about themselves and their comfort. But you know, I can't blame them. After all, we are indeed very dependent on animals, even if we don't notice it. Even in the 21st century, everything on the planet remains interconnected. And I'm not even talking about meat, milk, and wool. Even today, there is a huge number of services provided by animals despite all the technological advancements. For example, did you know you can rent a goat? Ever felt like doing something like this? And this, by the way, is an environmentally friendly way of mowing the lawn, at the very least. There are even special companies that offer such services. You can even order goats online. Usually all goats are insured, maybe even officially employed. I wouldn't be surprised to find this out. So how to choose a breed and where's the add to cart button? See you later.